welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we'll talk about various designs of Pontic in FPD. So basically, Pontic is the one that replaces the missing natural tooth in order to perform its function and to fill in the uh, edentulous space. All right. Now coming on to the classification of Pontic. Now Rosenstein classified the Pontics into mucosal contact and non-mucosal contact. So in mucosal contact, we basically have the ridge lap, modified ridge lap, ovate, and conical. Whereas in non-mucosal contact, we have the sanitary and modified sanitary Pontic. Um, so this was just a brief introduction. Now we'll just dig into the topic so that you can understand it very easily. So I will uh, write it in a, a table form so it is easy to understand and easy to recall. So first of all, we will discuss about the mucosal contact pontics. All right. Now coming on to the first pontic, which is the saddle ridge lap pontic. Now. Coming on to the design, the design of this pontic is somewhat like this over the ridge. All right. So what you can see is there is a large contact which is concave with ridge. All right. Now you will see that it overlaps both the buccal and the lingual overlaps both buccal and lingual surfaces of ridge. All right. Now, it simulates the emergence profile of natural tooth. So, if it is simulating the emergence profile of a natural tooth, so it means that it is going to be very aesthetic. So, in advantages, you can already mention that it is going to be aesthetically superior. Alright, in indications, in high aesthetic demand areas. Contraindication would be posterior teeth because aesthetics are not uh, in high demand, whereas functional uh, efficiency is. All right, then uh, it should not contact the soft tissue because it will cause the blanching of the tissue. Now, what happens is uh, since it is contacting a lot of surface area, so it is very difficult to clean. <coughs> that is, oral hygiene is compromised. All right. Uh, first of all, uh, one thing you must remember that this type of pontic is rarely used. All right. Now we will come on to the uh, second one, which is the modified ridge lap pontic. Now this is a modification of the first one. Now since in first one we knew that it is contacting the buccal as well as the lingual surface of the ridge. But in this what you see is it only contacts the buccal, uh, buccal area of the ridge. All right. So only buccal surface of ridge, only buccal surface of ridge is contacted. Also, it is convex from mesial to distal direction. Then, uh, when you view it from the gingival aspect, it is going to appear like a T letter, uh, such that the vertical arms end at the crest of the ridge. Suppose you are seeing it like this. <coughs> it will appear something like this. All right. Now. Uh, since it is only on the buccal surface as well, so there is a uh, maintenance of hygiene. It has superior aesthetics. So from here you can write the indications, anteriors, premolars and the maxillary molars. Alright, now however in a disadvantage, just to make a disadvantage you can see that the hygiene uh, maintenance is inferior to sanitary pontic. We will talk about sanitary pontic just after some while, after one or two pontics. Now sanitary pontic, just to remember, it is a non-mucosal contact pontic, all right? Now it is going to have poor oral hygiene as compared to sanitary pontic, all right? Then uh, uh, also uh, where there are uh, mandibular molars, okay? In this, it is contraindicated, all right? Now uh, coming on to the third pontic, which is the conical pontic. Now, in conical pontic, what you will see is, it is going to be somewhat like, it is only going to have one point contact with the ridge. It is going to have a tip contact with rounded angle. Alright, now uh, it is uh, to be seen that in this pontic, there is good oral hygiene access. So, good access for oral hygiene. But it is showing poor aesthetics. Alright. Now this makes up the uh, 
contraindications so uh, contraindicated in the aesthetic zone also it is uh, going to be contraindicated in the i hope it is visible in the video yeah so it is also going to be contraindicated in the broad residual edentulous ridges now why is that so because it is only having one point contact that also at the center of the ridge which is a small tip relation only now in the indications it is highly indicated this is very important question for ncqs as well it is highly indicated in knife edge posterior ridges and in molars in which aesthetic demand is less in which aesthetic demand is less all right now coming on to the fourth pontic and the last pontic that we have which is mucosal contact so it is the ovate this is very important now to remember this first of all one first thing that should come into your mind is it is the most aesthetically pleasing pontic all right now i will draw the design it is somewhat like this now over here what you will see is it is the convex surface of the pontic is within the ridge now if it is within the ridge it is going to have an appearance which simulates that the emergence profile is emerging from the uh, ridge only that is pontic is emerging from the ridge now the tissue contacting surfaces they are bluntly tissue contacting surfaces are bluntly rounded and set into concavity within ridge set into concavity within ridge now very important thing to remember in this this concavity within ridge it can be uh, made surgically also it is it can be uh, created surgically such that what we do is uh, we uh, create it by a provisional restoration which is similar in shape immediately after extraction all right immediately after extraction okay it can be surgically created uh, because it is involving a surgical uh, thing so the disadvantage uh, you can write in disadvantages that it requires surgical preparation all right now uh, it has a broad convex geometry so it is going to have str uh, more strength than the modified ridge lap all right then uh, emergence profile you can write about it then we see that there is a uh, oral hygiene maintenance because it is convex and there is uh, a lot of access for the flossing as well as for the cleaning now it requires a surgical preparation uh, also uh, what we you will see is there is a large tissue contact area now although you can do flossing but you need to maintain meticulous oral hygiene okay now it is uh, indicated these are very important to remember fresh extraction sockets now broad flat ridges the broad flat ridges was a contraindication in which of the pontic in the conical pontic all right remember this now <coughs> when there are because it is highly aesthetic so we will give it an interiors all right now coming on to the non mucosal contact <coughs> pontic first one is the sanitary dummy pontic it was given by tinker okay now in sanitary dummy pontic what you will see is something like now in sanitary by the name you should remember that it is going to have a good access for oral hygiene okay first remember this good access for oral hygiene by the name only then um, because it will have uh, minimal mucosal contact or no mucosal contact so it is going to cause minimal tissue inflammation all right now let's come to the design uh, first of all <coughs> there is no contact with the residual ridge now very important to remember here is a uh, fish belly design this is very important now in fish belly design what happens is the under surface okay it is rounded with no sharp angle so it is easier to clean while flossing all right now very important point to remember objectively is that there is occluso gingival thickness which should be greater than 3 mm okay this is very important now uh, the convex it has a convex configuration mesiodistally and buccolingually or uh, because this is uh, uh, this is as such because there is no contact all right so uh, what we see is this is very um, 
poor in aesthetics all right now because it is poor in aesthetics so it is going to be contra uh, contraindicated in the anterior region or the appearance zone also it is going to be indicated in the non appearance zone like mandibular molars and where there is occlusal gingival space is less all right now let's talk about the modified sanitary pontic now modified sanitary pontic you must remember the other names of modified sanitary pontic first name you must remember is parallel pontic second you must remember is arc shaped pontic okay now in this what you will see is <coughs> in this what you will see is there is a mesio distal concavity idhar there was only convexity all right but in modified we have mandibular uh, sorry mesio distal concavity now uh, whereas uh, the under surface under surface it is convex facio lingually so very important to remember this point it is a keyword hyperbolic parabolic configuration all right now very important it provides additional strength to connectors now what are connectors connectors are basically the ones which will connect the abutment to the pontic um connectors also we will discuss they are rigid non rigid then they are cross pin and so on uh, so this completes the pontic design all right now there are uh, two other types of pontic also which you can mention in the exam one is the custom and one is the prefabricated <coughs> by the name only you can talk about that this is going to be prefabricated available in the market this is according to the customized according to the patient's rich relation and so on in prefabricated you must remember some of the names of the pontics now in the names of the pontics you can remember the name of the pontic is true by pontic <coughs> true pontic sanitary facings then harmony pontic steel is pontic all right now another classification of pontics which you also can mention is all metallic all ceramic then metal ceramic then metal with resin facings then fiber reinforced composite pontic i will just mention uh, the types and advanced indications all right now all metallic all metallic will not be used in aesthetic region but it will be used in high stress bearing areas that is the mandibular molars also with people who have para functional habits like bruxism contraindicated all ceramic may uh, people with uh, para functional habits all ceramic obviously in aesthetic areas all right now metal ceramic is most commonly used but it is very important that the person uh, the that the uh, it is uh, very important that there should be the presence uh, with it can only be used when there is uh, it can only be fabricated when it is uh, when it has a retainer which is metal ceramic as well but in this it is a lot it, it includes a lot of lab procedures it is highly technical sensitive and it is cost effect uh, it is uh, costly also all right now in metal with resin facings in this what happens is uh, we given long term provisional restorations we never give it in definitive restorations all right now but however it is going to have very low strength and uh, very less abrasive resistance all right now in fiber reinforced composite pontics now in this it is uh, because it is resin bonded it is uh, given in fixed prosthesis it has good oral hygiene uh, in uh, given in those patients only then when there is an anterior single tooth missing all right or when you have to give a short span bridge all right but uh, it cannot be given in deep bite cases long span bridges also when there is replacement of the posterior missing teeth now it is easy acceptable aesthetic and in young patients also who have pulp chambers uh, a uh, big they uh, they are also we can give it all right now this completes the pontic classification and the type of designs now one more thing i will mention it here only um basically when you talk about the pontic design you talk about a lot of things first one being the occlusion now what happens is there has been long uh, the person has been long uh, edentulous for uh, ha is having a long edentulous span all right now due to this what we see is there is super eruption of the teeth now in this in severe cases what we do is we orthodontically treat the tooth either we give an intentional endodontic treatment then we cause the orthodontic upriting all right it is very important to have a edentulous space which is required to install the pontic then second is the gingival surface now there is a lot of uh, uh, facing of the glazings which are of a uh, pink chin tiger facing you will read it in the book it is given very nicely then uh, there is also the third is the buccal and the lingual surfaces very important because they are going to be the contact surfaces 
all right <coughs> then bridge very important now in bridge there is going to be a classification by servant now in this it he talks about the uh the width and the height resolution first uh, just remember it width height height width and then height and width both in this pehle loss of width hoga but normal height second mein loss of height but normal width or third mein dono ka hi loss all right now ridge resolution okay it it or basically is referring to the ridge resolution uh now fifth one which is very important is the embrasures now embrasures are very important because it is the only way to actually retain it All right, in interiors and posteriors, you will have to talk about the embrasured areas. All right, now I think I have mentioned all. Yeah, so this completes the pointing in the SPD. If you want a video of another components, do comment, and I hope I made it easier for you um, in a very easier format. So thanks for watching. Do subscribe to my channel to see more uh, videos from me. Thanks.